You're listening to the Begin Within Health Show with Nate Slager. For more, go to beginwithin.fit slash podcast or to enroll right now in our flagship coaching program, go to beginwithin.fit slash coaching. It's so interesting how we start out the year, the calendar year. I'm talking about the calendar year. We started out with so much excitement, so much hope. And at this point in the year where we are at halfway through the year, my question for you is how is that excitement? How is that hope of the things that you want to accomplish? How are you doing? I think for most, what ends up happening about this time of year is that they are feeling a little bit in survival mode. You know what I mean? We are just going through the motions at this point that all that excitement that was there regarding the start of the new year and all the things that we want to accomplish within 2024, it's pretty much evaporated at this point. And it's interesting because so much of those hopes and dreams and those goals that we have center often on health improvements, health and fitness and weight loss and all those things that we sometimes think about are connected to becoming better versions of ourselves physically, right? Those physical results that we wanted. We are ready to go at the start of the year. And now here we are halfway through the year. And again, my question is, how are you doing? How are you feeling about those goals? How have you done working toward those goals? And I'm not here to beat you up. I'm not here to leave you feeling disappointed in how things have gone. But rather, let's approach this conversation now halfway through the year, doing a little bit of a check-in. And even if the answer is, I have done absolutely zero or I've moved backwards when it comes to my health and my fitness goals. Let's just say that is okay. It's okay. Let's say that we've got plenty of time to make a correction. We got plenty of time to make adjustments to make sure that we keep moving in the direction that we want to go in. But let's pause for a moment and reflect. And the moment I'm going to invite you to pause is the amount of time that I'm going to coach you through this process of doing this check-in, this little time for self-reflection, recalibration, and getting some inspiration, maybe just a little bit of motivation to pick up the pieces to get ourselves back to being in the mindset of moving forward and at least being aware that this process is taking place below the surface of all the other things that are going on in life, all the other things that are causing us some worry, some stress, all the other things that are demanding our attention, all the other priorities we have, At the same time, we have our health and we're either moving in a healthier direction or we're moving in a less healthy direction, right? So let's just acknowledge that that is the reality and let's talk together about what we can do here halfway through the year to reflect on how things have gone and focus on what we can do to continue to improve So basically, what we're doing, we're going to the New Year's resolution graveyard, and we are going to take a look at what we can do to still dig up some success from this year, 2024, because 2025 is coming, right? This first part of the year zipped by. If you thought 2023 went fast, I know I'm not alone and feeling like, Oh my goodness, I can't believe we're halfway through 2024. 2025 is coming. We're going to be excited about our goals at that point. Why not work on making sure that we're in a better place than we've ever been by the time we get to the end of this calendar year? The simple fact is this. The time of year does not matter. We know that, right? 
the time of year, cha- changing the calendar, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't help us at all to be more successful or less successful, right? It doesn't really do anything to guarantee our success or lower our risk of failure when we set goals at the beginning of a calendar year. It has no power over us whatsoever. We know that, right? So let's just say this time of year, the middle of the year, is as good a time as any to get started and to get to work. And I think sometimes believing that the beginning of the year this is a great time to set goals. This is the this is the time to do it and the rest of the year is just kind of a free for all and we'll see what happens. I think that whole belief sometimes leads us to being stuck. Leads us to maybe not making progress because we put a little bit too much emphasis on the fact that there's some New Year's magic or something that's going on, right? There's no extra mojo January 1st, more than there is now where we are at now in July. So now is as good a time as any to make sure that we're moving in a healthier direction. Would you agree? Are you with me on that? So I think for starters, let's acknowledge that. And then let's do this. Let's realize that the real destination for you and me, because we're just regular people, right? We're regular people trying to live life and trying to be the healthiest version of ourselves that we can be. Let's realize that for us regular people, and I think most people are are with us in just being regular people, for us, the destination is progress. It's not necessarily arriving at any specific goal. The destination is continuing to make adjustments and say, hey, I'm healthier than I was six months ago. I'm healthier than I was a year ago, even though I'm older. You think it's possible? You think it's possible to be healthier even as we get older? I absolutely think that it is. And we're going to discuss how that can absolutely be. But the 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 goal is just to be moving in a healthier direction. It's actually to be taking actions consistently that we know are going to be moving us in a healthier direction. So in that little uh, spectrum of health, unhealthy on one side, healthy on the other side, we're just, our goal is to be leaning toward being healthier than we were before. That's the goal. That is the target for us. So Outside of, I want to lose X amount of weight, I want to achieve this, I want to lower these numbers the next time I see the doctor. Like Those are all great. Those are great things. But the, the bottom line is this, are we moving in a healthier direction? And that takes some pressure off too, doesn't it? Because we start out the, the year saying, I'm going to lose 25 pounds this year. Okay. Are we on our way there? Maybe. Maybe we're not. Maybe on that scale, we're moving in the wrong direction. But can we be moving in a healthier direction still overall? Absolutely, we can. So that takes some pressure off and gives us a little bit of hope, doesn't it? It gives us some sense for optimism moving forward when we have that mindset. So that's the mindset that I want you to approach this process with. And let's talk about the need for reflection. This is the thing that gets missed so much if you've been a listener for a while, you have heard me talk about this. I have had clients, people that I have worked with for months, and they tell me the biggest thing, the most helpful thing that I have gotten out of this program is a structure for continuous reflection. It's a huge part of the program that I present to people. They have to be able to have some punctuation on life on a regular basis, wherein they're reflecting. They're just saying, hey, how, how, how's this process been going? Am I moving in the direction I want? Am I not moving in the direction I want? What are some things I can do moving forward that, that will serve me even more fully? But if we don't have some time to reflect, it's not going to happen. We're not going to ever make those adjustments. We're not going to ever have awareness that the adjustments need to be made. Reflection Reflection, reflection is so important. And so periodically here on the podcast, I want to encourage you 
to take some time for reflection. And I want to encourage you to do that by giving you time for reflection. I think the midpoint of the year is a great time to do that. Because like I said, we use the calendar for setting goals. We use it. We get some, we get some, uh, a little bit of inspiration to do so at the start of the calendar year. So how about halfway through? How are we doing? Great time for reflection. It is so important to do it. To see how we're, to see how we're doing, to see how we're progressing. Are we or aren't we? And again, even if the answer is I'm not, I'm not happy with how things have been going, then we have to sit down with that. And we have to acknowledge that that's what's going on and not just be ignoring it, right? Not just bury our head in the sand and say, oh, things aren't going well, so I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to look at it. I'm not even going to be aware of it. And that can happen, can't it? Let's be honest. That can happen to all of us when things aren't the way we want them to be. We have a tendency to not want to look at it. So what I'm encouraging you to do is look at it, reflect, take some time right now to check in and see how it's going. And I want to encourage you because day to day, especially when it comes to health, we have a tendency to zoom in, don't we? We have a tendency to stay zoomed in when it comes to our health. And that's because we oftentimes become aware of our health when we experience some discomfort, don't we? We think about health when we're in pain, when things aren't going the way that we want, and when things are going fine and we're able to just kind of go about our life relatively, you know, at least physically comfortable, we don't really think about our health. So when we do become conscious of our health, we do become aware of it. It's always in a zoomed in fashion. It's that, oh, right now, today, in this moment, this part of my body really, really hurts. We're zoomed way in. Or we zoom way in on one aspect of of a measure of our health or our fitness, like our, our body weight, right? Getting on the bathroom scale. We zoom way in on this one thing. And we use that as a gauge for how everything else is going. And as we do, it oftentimes is a source of negative feelings because we, we become aware of our health in those, in those situations. So health and pain or health and discomfort are often hand in hand, right? The only time I think about health is when I think about being unhealthy. So what I'm encouraging you to do now, instead of being zoomed in on just one thing, on one pain, on one, one data point, on body weight or whatever it is, is zoom out. Zoom out for me. Zoom out. Look at the big picture of who you are in terms of health. And we're going to do that together. We're going to look at the big picture of things together as we reflect. And as we zoom out, we have the ability to do a little bit of time traveling as well. I'm going to ask you to zoom not into this moment, even if there's something that's really bugging you when it comes to your health, maybe some pain, some discomfort, or a result that, you're, that you have that you wish you didn't have. But zoom out in terms of time. And that, that is helpful too. And this is, this is, we're talking about some coaching tactics here. I'm coaching you for a reason. I want to help you to become more resourceful in these moments. We're going to zoom in in just a bit, but we're going to zoom in coming from a perspective of having zoomed out, okay? Zoom out and realize that even in the course of time, in the course of your entire life, we are making decisions that can take us in entirely different places, and what I want you to do is zoom out five years from now and zoom out and just look at five years from now, you are in a healthier place. You are a healthier person. You are doing things that leave you feeling optimistic, leave you feeling energized. You're sleeping well. You're eating nutritious meals. You're doing it. Five years from now, zoom out to there. How does it feel? Doesn't that feel great? It feels 
uh, I feel a sense of relief just talking about it, just thinking about zooming out and realizing that when we put some distance between now and where, wherever our future point is, it allows us to see that, that we can drastically change the trajectory of where we are now or rather, where we're going to end up. I shouldn't say where we are now. We can change our trajectory right now just a little bit and end up in a total different place in the future. You follow me on that? Five, let's say five years from now, I'm, I'm, I'm just making some little changes, but I'm doing them day after day after day after day. What do you think is going to happen, right? And I'm talking about little changes like staying properly hydrated, eating more veggies, uh, getting better sleep day after day after day, right? Little trajectory changes. I'm working out consistently. Five years from now, things are different. Things are going to be different. I guarantee you things are going to be different. You're going to be a better version of yourself as we make those changes right now. Zoom out and look at life from a a more elevated perspective for just a moment as part of this reflection, right? We're going to, in this reflection session, we're zooming out right now so that we can zoom back in. And as we're zooming out, we can't be zoomed in at the same time. It is not possible. So zoom out, look at the big picture of your life and realize that you can make a difference You can make different choices now that are going to make you a different person later, later down the line. Zoom out. Zoom out farther than six months. Zoom out farther than a calendar year because I think it's important to do that because I think you and I have a very real understanding of what actually we can accomplish in in a month, two months, three months, six months, even in a calendar year, especially as we go through the ebb and the flow of the, uh, the maybe the resolutions at the beginning of the year, and then the disappointment of not achieving them, and then trying it again the next year, right? We've done this before. We've done it. We've done it. So look ahead five years. Look ahead five years, and you've been making some really healthy choices. You've been leaning in the healthier direction for five years now big things are happening. Things are really changing. And that's exciting. And zooming out also gives us some space to have some self-compassion, to realize that just because we couldn't do it perfectly and get the fast result that we had maybe thought was possible or we hoped for, we couldn't do it perfectly, that's okay. That's okay. We've got plenty of time to do it better. Not needing to be perfect. We've got plenty of time to do it better. Not perfect. Time is on our side when we zoom out. When we're zoomed in, we want these quick results because we're focused on our immediate discomfort. It doesn't serve us. Because then we try to get those quick results and they don't come. Or they do come and then we lose them because we don't really change who we are, change our lifestyle. It doesn't serve us. Zooming out does serve us. It allows us to have self-compassion. It allows us to have that sense of optimism. It allows us to see that a little change in trajectory adds up. Little changes add up. They snowball. They make big things happen in life. So that's what I want for you as as we reflect. I want I always want to zoom out and then we're going to zoom back. We're going to zoom back in. But first, before we do, I want to fuel I want to I want to throw fuel on the fire of inspiration and resourcefulness. And here's how we're going to do it. We zoomed out. Now I want to throw some more fuel on that by celebrating. I want you to take a moment, a few moments here, and realize what you've been doing well in terms of health. And and again, I know, I know, maybe you don't have what you want to have when it comes to health and wellness, and fitness, and maybe you got some numbers that you're not happy with. Maybe you got some discomfort you're not happy with. But first, 
before we zoom in and talk about some of the changes that we can make, I want you to stay zoomed out and look at celebration and what reasons there are for it. What things are you proud of? What might you be proud of as you look back over the last six months? Forget about whatever the specific goal was on January 1st. Seriously, forget about that specific goal. I want to know what are the things that you have done that need to stay in place in, as part of your healthy lifestyle. We all have them, right? We have things we want to change, but there's things that are already in place that should stay. Reflect on those for a moment. What are the things that you're doing now that that future you five years from now is still doing? Even if the things now are just showing up in your life a little bit. What are you doing well? What's going well in terms of health for you? And you maybe could look back five years ago. What are some of the things you're doing now? Eating now, drinking now, or not eating now and not drinking now that you were doing five years ago that were moving you in a less healthy direction. Now here you are, present time, five years later from there, and you're doing some things differently, aren't you? I know you are because you're here. You're listening to this podcast. That's one of the things right now you can celebrate that you are doing something. You are investing some time and some focus and some energy into becoming a better version of yourself just by connecting with someone like me. You are spending some effort to become better just by getting some education by listening to a podcast like this or other podcasts, right? There's so many little, little things. And I want you to take a moment. Take a moment right now. You can put this on pause. And this is so important. Put this on pause. And just think about three things that you are proud of that you are doing to move in a healthier direction. Put it on pause now. (laughs) You can put me on pause now and do that. You got three things? Did you get those three things? Take a moment to do it, please. And now I want you to really acknowledge yourself for having done those. Those are things you weren't doing five years ago. These are efforts that you are putting forth that have changed trajectory for you. They have. You are somewhere totally different. You are someone totally different than you were five years ago because of these little healthy choices that you've been making. Celebrate that. You have a foundation that you can build on. Celebrate it. Well done. I'm celebrating you for it. I'm telling you, awesome job. Awesome. The person that you were in the not-too-distant past is not the same person you are now because of the changes that you have made, because of the things that you have put in place. I want, I want you to celebrate that. I want you to celebrate that. And I will do it for you if you, if you can't. Beautiful job. So many different things, right? Are you part of a program now that you weren't part of before? What podcasts are you listening to? What books are you listening to? Are there people in your life, friends, that are there now as a result of uh, fitness communities that you've been a part of? Are you, did you get some fitness equipment? Did you get some uh, some exercise equipment at home? Did you get a gym membership? Did, what All those things, they add up. Have you tried some new veggies? Are you having salads more often? Are you drinking more water than you used to? Are you trying to go to bed? Do you have a bedtime that you've set up? All those types of things, they help move you in a healthier direction. Any of them that you're doing, you need to celebrate it. And that helps us, doesn't it? It helps us moving forward. So what I want to do next is take you through the six pillars of health. We're going to do a little bit of a self-assessment, all right? We've done this before on the show, and... And maybe it's been a little while since you've done it. These are the six pillars of health, the things that we have focused on again and again and again, all the guests that we've had on, 
every single one of the things that they talk about in order to improve health and the ways they're helping their patients and their clients, they fall into one of these six categories. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to list through the six. Okay. We're going to list through the six. And I want you to rate how this area of health has been showing up in your life over the last six months. I want you to give it a score on a scale of one to 10. It doesn't have to be a long deliberation in order to give yourself the score. The score is just say, hey, how has this been showing up in my life? Am I putting some effort into this? Am I not? Am I putting maximum effort, 10 out of 10? Then I give it a 10. If it's just barely showing up, right? It's just barely hanging on <laughs> as part of my life, then maybe I give it a one. The goal here is to put some effort into it. We're doing the reflection. We're doing some of the work right now that's going to benefit us in the future. And we're going to benefit from it in just a just a minute or two here after we go through this list. So what I want you to do is give yourself a score, 1 to 10. If you want, you can just think through this. I recommend you grab your notes app on your phone. You grab a pen and paper and actually write down a score, record a score for yourself in each of these areas. Okay, you ready to do it? We're just gonna bl blitz through the areas. I'm not gonna take a long time in each of these. I just want you to give yourself a score and I want you to be able to look back at each of the scores in each of these areas. So number one, nutrition. Talking about food, the foods you're eating. How is the effort, how is that area of of fitness, of wellness, of health? How is it showing up in your life right now in terms of nutrition? How much effort are you putting into it? One to 10, give it a score. Nutrition. All right, got your score there. Next, hydration. We're talking about water, mostly, right? We're talking about water. And, and I include other drinks into hydration. And sometimes those are drinks that we know we may be having a lot of that aren't moving us in a healthier direction, if you know what I mean. So when it comes to the things that we're drinking, how are we doing? Are we putting some effort into lots of healthy things that we're guzzling and trying to avoid the things that are moving us in a less healthy direction? How much effort are we putting into good hydration? One to 10, give yourself a score. All right. Ready? Moving on. Sleep. Sleep is next. Sleep. How's that showing up for you in your life? Do I have a bedtime? Do I have a, a, a wake up time? Am I getting my seven to eight hours that the experts tell me I need in order for good physical and mental recovery and health? Sleep. How am I doing? Am I putting some effort into it? Scale. One to ten. Give it a scale. Give it a score. Next. My relationship with myself, kind of my, my own mental health. How am I doing in that area? Some of the things that in that area, you know, like self-compassion, like taking some time for gratitude, having some quiet time for reflection, Managing stress, I'm talking about psychological stress, resilience, dealing with uh, challenges uh, internally, right? How am I doing in those areas? Um, my overall mindset, my overall optimism, positivity, how, how is the effort in that area? Scale it 1 to 10. All right. We're almost there. Two more areas. Uh, number... Area number five is connection. Connection with others, relationships with others. A huge part of good health, right? Healthfulness. We've got to have relationships with others. So important for us. We are social creatures. How are my relationships? How's my effort going into those relationships? Scale it one to 10. How am I doing? And that's the area I call connection, just connections with others. Uh, and I also include nature in that one, right? How am I doing? Getting, getting some time outside getting some time by the water with the trees. It's an important part of health. You better believe it. Pets, we include that one in this area too. How am I doing? How is this showing up? One to 10. 
And then lastly, maybe the one you thought of first, I mentioned it earlier in our conversation, that is movement. How am I doing in that area? Scale of one to 10, right? Am I working out consistently most days? Am I getting my workouts in? Am I moving my body on a regular basis? How is it showing up for me? And these are all very, very, very subjective scores. This is about you. This is about how you're doing in your own view. Now we're zooming in, right? We are zooming way in into these specific areas and looking at each of them. All right. Now I want to invite you to to step out of those scores for a moment and just look. Just notice what you see. Again, we're gonna now we're doing the reflection. All right. And we're looking at those scores in each of those six areas. You've got six numbers written down in those six areas, right? Number one was nutrition, hydration. Number two, number three, sleep. Number four, relationship with yourself. Number five, connection with others and the environment. And number six, movement. You've got those six scores. Now what I want to invite you to do is just zoom in on one. I want you to forget about the other ones for a moment. Zoom in on the one area not where you have the lowest score. Maybe it is that one. What I want to invite you to do is just zoom in on the one area where you feel like you could make the biggest change in the score with the least effort. Do you like that? Where can you make the biggest change with the least effort? Bump that thing up. One, two, three, four, five points. Maybe take it almost all the way to 10 with the least amount of effort in those, uh, of all those areas. Which one is it? Which one of those areas? And the the last question I have for you, mm, I'm going to ask you two more questions. Okay, second to last question I have for you, because your brain's already going there, is what might you do specifically in that area in order to move it forward. And I'm not talking about maximum forward, right? To get to 10 out of 10. All I want to know, all I want to know right now is what might you do in that area to get that score to move forward by one point? That's all I want to know now. We're zooming way in. What is the thing or things? What might they be that's going to get that score to move forward for you? Just one notch. One notch. That's all we want in that one area. And now my last question is, when are you going to do that thing on a daily basis? What time of day? When is it going to be happening? It can be a time on the clock. It can be a place in your schedule. I'll do it after this. I'll do it before this. When are you going to do it? Final question. (laughs) And you now have your final answer. And I, what I want you to do now is commit. Commit to taking that step, that one step to move that one area ahead one notch. And what you're going to find is you're probably going to move it forward a whole lot more than that. And what we often find happens is that area that we pick where we can make the biggest change with the least amount of effort, as that one moves forward, other areas naturally move forward too. So you get a lot of bang for your buck. Really big results for a little bit of energy being invested. And that's what we love here on the Begin Within Health Show. We love great results with less effort. We love for it to be easy. And this is how we make fitness fit you, not the other way around. Because when we try to get ourselves to fit into fitness, someone else's fitness, it does not work. This is a solo job. This is an individual process. What works for me might not work for you, but the the process is going to work. The specific things, the foods, the workouts, the exercises, those are all individual based on preferences, based on our own uh, genetics, based on just who we are already, our background. But the process works process of moving in a healthier direction works for all of us, especially when we break it down this way. We zoom out and then we zoom in. All right. 
And you can do this anytime you want. Take those six areas, rescore yourself. Sometimes scaling on one to 10 in those six areas, that scale is so much more important than the, the scale on the bathroom floor, which just gives us a number. It doesn't really tell us a whole lot. These scale scores do tell us a whole lot. And they give us a place to go. They give us some insight into what we can do next in order to continue to move in a healthier direction. Halfway through 2024, thank you for being here with me. I absolutely love conversations like this. Thanks for sticking around to the end. And thanks for doing the work. Thanks for actually putting some effort into those scores that you gave yourself, putting some thought into it. This is kind of a fun workshop to, to do together. And I want to thank you for, for doing the work, for being somebody who is interested in becoming a better version of who you are. I'm so grateful that you're here with me, grateful that you're listening, grateful that you share the show, that you rate and review the show and your podcast player. You're helping to keep this podcast in the top 10% of all podcasts. And I'm so grateful for that because I absolutely love, love creating this for you. And I love being able to spend a little bit of time with you each and every week here on the Begin Within Health Show. Thank you so much. Continue to take good care of yourself. I'll talk with you again very soon. Soon.